Hey there, good morning everybody. Merry Christmas. It is uh, Saturday, December the 25th, 2021, 11.06 in the morning. I guess I'm still on Central Time as we were in Texas for a good part of the week this week. And so we're just over an hour late here, but it's also Christmas morning. And so I needed to do some things this morning and get it done. And so here we are. And you're probably not going to watch live anyways today. You're with your families doing your thing. So chapter number 25 in the book of Matthew, as we've started it on the 1st of December, and we will finish this book on Tuesday. Uh, it'll wrap it up. And then we've got, let's see, that'll be 29, 30, 30 a three day, uh, three days until the end of the year. And I found a book that we have not done that is only three chapters long. And we're going to knock that out in Old Testament uh, minor prophet. And then on the first of the year, we'll start something brand new. So let's go ahead and pray and we'll jump into Matthew 25. I hope you'll follow along in your Bibles. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness to us. Please bless our reading and study this morning. Thank you for the Lord Jesus as we celebrate his birth and incarnation on this day. I pray that you'll give all of our families a good restful day, uh, thoughtful of the birth of Christ. Thank you not only for his coming, but for why he came, that he might die in our place to redeem our souls from its sinful state. Please bless our study again, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. All right, here we go. Matthew 25, verse number one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So we're getting ready to hear a parable about preparation for the coming of the Lord. Now, chapter 24 had several parables about this. The importance of being ready, because you don't know when Christ may come, and so you need to be ready. Don't delay salvation. Don't put off being saved. And so just as we went through chapter 24, saw several parables, we're picking right up in chapter 25 with another parable. And this time we're talking about 10 virgins with lamps waiting to meet the bridegroom. So three stages of the Jewish wedding process. One, the parents would agree to the marriage. Two was the betrothal stage, which we spoke of when we talked about Joseph and Mary and why they were legally husband and wife, but they had not yet consummated the relationship. Uh, and then you've got where the, the bride will come to be uh, fetched by her groom. And so that's what this is talking about, while the bride is waiting for the groom to come and get her. So so there are 10 virgins, one of which is the bride, the other would be nine bridesmaids, and they're waiting for his coming. Verse number two, and five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now to us, this is clearly a symbol of the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, oil is used as a symbol of the Holy Spirit of God. And so for those who've put their faith in Christ, they possess oil or the Holy Spirit, if you will. Those who have not accepted Christ have no Holy Spirit, therefore have no oil. So five of these young ladies are saved. The other five are not. Verse number five, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So they're waiting on the bridegroom to come. He's delaying his coming, so they fall asleep. Verse 6, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet them. So all of a sudden somebody, Hey, wake up, girls. The bridegroom is here. Wake up. Now something else that's important to take note of is the fact that the bridegroom was usually referring to God himself, the Father. So for Jesus to tell a parable insinuating that he is the bridegroom meant that he was putting himself in the place of God, which we understand he rightfully did because he is God. At the same time, those Jews that were looking to attack him and accuse him of blasphemy, they've got good evidence for it now, don't they? So get up, here he comes, is what they're told. Uh, let's see here, verse number seven. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. 
And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So we finished reading up the story. The virgins without oil asked oil of the ones with it. And they said, look, we don't have enough for you. You have to go get your own. And by the way, salvation cannot be obtained through another person. You have to get it from God himself, from the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't trust the fact that your family heritage has been saved or a certain denomination. You can't trust denominations. You can't trust priests, preachers, pastors, ministers. Uh, you can't trust the humans to get you to heaven. You've got to go to the one who has the oil, and that's the Lord himself. And so they went off to get it, but it was too late. He took the five who were saved with the oil into the chamber and shut the door. And that door is going to be shut, just like the door of the ark was shut. And folks will not have an opportunity to be saved after they've delayed and waited. Verse number 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Now here we're going to learn a little bit both about salvation and rewards. This is the parable of the talents, and it's rather lengthy, and I think I'm just going to read it, and then we'll discuss it once I've read. Verse number 15, And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliveredst unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliveredst unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath it shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, here's the story. A businessman comes to three employees, and he gives each of them a sum of money. He gives one five talents of money. Talent was a weight, not a currency like a dime or a nickel or a quarter. And so, ten pounds of money, if you will, or five pounds of money. Another, he gives two talents or two pounds of money. To another, he gives one pound of money or one talent. And the Bible says that he gave to each man according to their ability. So the guy who got five had greater ability than the guy who had two. And he had greater ability than the guy that had one. But they all had some kind of ability. None of us are totally useless. None of us are without uh, some kind of ability. And so the businessman goes away and he leaves them for a while. 
And the first two get to work. The guy takes his five talents, he invests it, turns it into ten talents. The guy with two talents invests it, turns it into four talents. But the guy with one talent literally dig a, dug a hole, put the talent in the ground, covered it up, and just waited for the master to come back. So then they all get word that he's back, so they bring to him what he'd left with them. And the guy with five gives him talent. The guy with two gives him four. The guy with one hands over this dirty sack of money and says, you know, I was afraid uh, that I'd lose this. And so here, this is yours. This is what you trusted me with. This is what you get back. And the Lord then praises the guy who had five and turned it into 10. And he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And he says the same exact thing to the guy with two that turned him into four. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Look, God is looking for faithfulness amongst his people. Just faithful consistency. You don't have to be the best. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the strongest. You, you just do your best and be faithful at it. And by the way, anyone can show up. Anybody can show up. It's true. You can show up. And so be faithful to show up. God will bless that. Now, the guy with only one, he dug a hole, and then he blames the master for it. He says, I knew thee that thou art a hard man. Notice, I didn't do anything with my talent because of you. And there will be people who will blame God for their lack of willingness to get saved. And that's what this is ultimately talking about here, whether, whether or not these people are saved. The saved men uh, then took their uh, efforts and did something with them for God's glory. The one who had the one talent didn't even trust Christ. He's lost. That's why he's cast into outer darkness. So the principle here is get saved. And then once you're saved, be faithful to serve the Lord in some way or fashion. All right, verse number 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. So the story here, and it's not a fictitious story, it'll occur, it's the judging of nations we find that, again, because the book is written to Israel, God is trying to get his nation, his people, to understand what he's going to do here. And so Jesus says, I'll come back someday to judge the nations. And verse 32, before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. So clearly the sheep are God's people, the goats are are not his people. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And so he takes these sheep, and he says, you know, you people, I was sick, you helped me get better, I was naked, you clothed me, I was hungry, you fed me, I was thirsty, and you gave me drink, I was in prison, and you visited me. They said, well, when did we do any of that? He said, when you did it for these, meaning other people, you did it unto me. That's the two laws that all the law hangs on, right? Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. So as we love other people, we're loving the Lord in the process. <clears throat> so he rewards them for this. Then he shall say, uh, verse 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So, you know, hell was not created for man. It was created for Satan and those angels that followed him in rebellion against God. 
But for those of us who also rebel against the gospel and reject Christ, they will end up in hell also. Verse 42, for I was in hunger and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Naked and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? <clears throat> then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye did it not to the least, to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. I have to be careful that you don't misunderstand this to mean a work salvation uh, or something of that nature. It's simply, by their fruit ye shall know them. By their work shall ye know them. People who are God's people, they serve God. People who are not, they don't. And so it's just a matter of <clears throat> what James says in chapter 2. You know, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. In other words, man needs to see some sort of sign that indicates that you're a Christian. All right, that's chapter number 25, uh, 46 verses. These are getting longer and longer, aren't they? In fact, tomorrow, chapter 26, and I hate that it's on a Sunday for you, but I think there are 75 verses in Matthew chapter number 26. So you might have to break that one down. I don't know. It just depends how quickly we get through it. Sometimes we cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. Time will tell, won't it? All right, I'm going to leave you alone with that. Hopefully this broadcast, okay, I'm, my screen is dead except for the counter that's ticking. Usually if that's ticking, it means it's okay. Anyways, please like, love, and share the post. Let people know we're out here, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Remember, we record, and then we broadcast at 8 a.m. that recording. So we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you live again on Monday. God bless you. Have a great Christmas day. Merry Christmas to you all.